Peace and love, brothers and sisters. As promised, this is part two of basic knowledge. However, before we begin exploring the senses, there's something I'd like to say to one and all. Whenever you receive new information, it is news to you. Therefore, you should analyze the news to realize that the news is a source slash sinew of directions. And right there in the spelling of the word news, we can find the four directions. North, east, west, south. I know most of us are programmed to hear east, west, north, south. But in this arrangement of the directions, the message to extract from that is that the new enter and exit the womb south. And south, if you don't know, describes our crotch. I'm going to show you how I arrive at that. Right there in the news, we can find the four directions of the body. North represents our head because the light goes off in our head and naturally we have the northern lights. East represents our front because our penis and our womb rises in the front to match the eastern sunrise that bring life to everything. West is our rear end because our bum bow matches the moon bow that points west as it waxes. South is our crotch and when they say your thoughts go south, it goes south to the point where we cross over from body to body in conception and then back over at birth and naturally we have the southern cross. As promised, let's see how our five senses work in harmony with the five elements and as I stated previously, I realize that most people can only identify four of the five elements and those are earth, water, wind, and fire. So let's proceed. <clears throat> we see sunlight. We smell or breathe air. We taste the water and we touch the earth. But most people can't tell you which element match up with our earring. And it's simple. It's darkness. Most babies communicate with the outside world by listening, first listening. That's the first part of communication, is listening. So darkness, so that's if you don't know how your senses match up with the five elements, here they go. You hear best in darkness, and as they say, you can hear a pin drop. You see in sunlight, you breathe air, you taste water, and you touch the earth. Now once I figured out that my five senses work in armor with the five elements, I wrote a poem my children when they were much younger and this poem is titled Sense the Element and it goes like this. Ears on mommy's tummy, here's babies listening in the dark. Eyes to the warm fire, sees the sun. Nosing around like daddy, smells the air. Mouths wide open to the rain, taste the water. Hands and feet of crawling babies, touch the ground. Once I figured out that my five senses work in harmony with the five elements, I decided to see how I can use my five senses to arrive at ultimate proof. And I'm going to pose this scenario to you. Say you were visiting my house and upon approaching the door you smell fish as if I was frying fish or something. Yet when I open my door and I let you in my kitchen, you didn't see any fish or didn't see me frying any big fish, you're going to have doubts because sight and smell does not match. Let's reverse the scenario. Say you walk into the house now and you saw the fish. That would be smell and sight in agreement. You could then reach out and touch the fish to affirm its realness. Then you could taste the fish by ingesting it. And then you can hear if it makes a sound or not as you're chewing it. Now, once all five senses are in agreement with that one object, you should never let anyone convince you otherwise. 
after using my five senses to see how I can arrive at ultimate proof, I decided to exercise my senses further by abbreviating the word senses to see how many natural or man-made events that could fit perfectly in the abbreviation senses. And the first one that I discovered that will have a little bite to it is that schools educate Negroes or nations to serve European sovereigns. If we move into American history, we'll realize that Scots, which means blacks, emancipated North to escape slavery. If you want to find out more about that, you read about Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. <clears throat> into, if we move into astrology or astronomy, first we're going to realize that the sun elevates north from southeast seasonally. And I move further into the cosmos, and cosmos means world order. I discover that Sambo, which is the new moon and its new crescent, expose the new being in the southeast skies. Once I was able to fit the fact that Sambo Moon exposed the new being in the southeast skies, I also remembered that the moon is our closest neighbor. And I was curious with the word neighbor, and I wanted to see how they derive at the word neighbor. So I went out and I studied the moon and noticed that the new moon is Negro. It is nigh, meaning it is close to the earth, our closest neighbor, and it bears its hood in 14 nights. Thus, you take the word ni, two letters ni from negro, I-G-H from nigh, past tense of bear is bore, and hood remains the same, thus you create the word neighborhood. We were also commanded biblically to love thy neighbor as we do ourselves simply because there is an image, we told that there was an image of man in the moon. Instead of being told that there's an ultrasound image of life in the moon to represent life in the womb. If you know what to look for when you look at the moon, the Egyptians also represented as a god seated being. <clears throat> we were also told about the hunchback of Notre Dame and the main character Quasimodo. And to break that all down, <clears throat> Quasi, meaning to mimic or be like, and modo meaning what the moon does. And the word natro means our, and dame means lady. So in fact, it all says we must mimic what the moon do to create a hunchback baby in our lady. <clears throat> the moon transformed into a, from black into a silver ball, and thus it went on to inspire the city of Transylvania. We were also told that the full moon turns people into werewolf. Instead of being told that the moon makes people become aware like wolves who howl at the moon. And without overbearing you with too much information about the moon, I am going to leave you with these vital moon names I would like you to check out before our next shared enlightenment. And these names are Ah, eight. A-H, which is an ancient name for the moon. And you know that is how we use the word ah. Whenever you're surprised or you're enlightened by something, you tend to say ah. The next Egyptian name is Amos, and it means born of the moon. The last part of that is how the name Moses came about. The next name is Aya, I-A-H, another ancient moon name. From that we have Ja, another ancient moon name, Ya. We also have O, B, A. Notice at the end of each name, the letter A, retaining the moon name. Then we have Messiah. And last but not least, we have the word that most Christians shout in churches, Hallelujah, which just simply means, in translation, praise be the moon. Until our next shared enlightenment, please give this video a thumbs up, share, comment, and subscribe. Peace and love.